Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Digital Escape. Here we review anything audio and video gear. That's what we do on this channel. And uh, if this is something that is going to interest you, I would like that you subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be doing something about video and audio game. If this is something that will interest you, subscribe to the channel so that you won't be left out by pressing the notification button and you're going to be getting all the video that is coming out from this channel. You will get notification that we have a new video. Who knows? It may be something that will interest you. So please do subscribe if you really want to support the channel so that the channel can grow. All right, so today is going to be about Mixer. And in particular, we're going to be dealing with uh, analog mixing console. You know, in any live event, either in worship center, probably in a studio or live stage, if you're going to project your sound out for a large audience, you're going to need something that will process the equipment that you're going to use and to project out your voice. And this way, you're going to need what we call mixer. And the mixer can either be digital or analog. But in this way, all I have here today to show you and walk you through is going to be analog mixer. And analog mixer, more or less like the digital mixer, their function is one purpose. Okay, they have the same function, they have the same purpose, but they are built from different manufacturer. Just because that they are built from different manufacturer, you know, the layout may be a little bit vary from one missing console to the other. But the idea or the ideology is always going to be the same. The functionality is always going to be the same. The only caveat to this will be that the mixer you are using, the amount of functions that you get from that mixer will depend on the price, okay, and the size of the mixer. Some are just built to you know, give you input and output and that's it. So mixer take it a little bit, you know, above the notch and give you some more functions that probably you will need. And some even go a bit higher to give you something more of a little bit add-on. So the only difference we're going to see in analog, analog mixer or digital mixer is going to be that some add-on or some take-off, okay? And... Today, I'm going to be using this Yamaha MGP24X. That's what I'm going to be using as my example. And if you follow through with what I'm doing here, what I'm going to be going through here is going to be applicable to other analog mixer. The difference, like I said, is going to be some add-on and some take-off, okay? Depend on how much you're paying for the mixer, depend on the price. Some will come with some additional functions. Why some will just be input and output? Okay, so this mixer you are looking at here is not like a pure analog. I will say that this is going to be 80% analog and 20% digital, okay? There's some digital function to this analog on this side of the mixer, which is going to be digital. The rest is analog. That's why I say that it's not like a fully 100% analog. We have some digital, you know, uh, function that is going on in this mixer. So without further ado, let's look at the component and we get to see the functions of the mixer so that you can know. If this is your first time, you know, laying your hand on analog mixer, if you follow through with this video, by the end of it, I guarantee you that you'll be able to know your way around analog mixer, okay? Regardless of the type of product you're using, it's still gonna be the same layout, all right? so. Without further ado, let's get into the component. And I'm going to start from the back, just to show you the input and the output from the back. Then we we'll walk our way to all the knobs we see here, then down to the fader, then go back to the other auxiliary functions. That's what we're going to do today, all right? Let's get into it. If you're looking at the back right here, okay? From this right here, if you look at this right here, back to this, that's the input, all right? So let me just explain whatever you see on this line applicable to the rest of the line here, okay? On this one, we have 15 mic preamp, okay? If you look at the down here, this is input A, we have input B, and we have insert. 
So I'm going to be using this one channel to explain the rest. It's the same thing, all right? So when you look at this one right here, you have, um, this is what we call SLR input. And it's going to be like this input, okay? That's what we call SLR. And this is where you're going to plug your microphone, all right? If you have a microphone, this is where your microphone is going to go. And I'm using channel 16 right here. You can plug your mic on any channel, doesn't really matter, but I'm just using the system for this demonstration. So I put my channel system right here. Okay, so you can use the SLR input and you can use the quarter inch input, but you cannot use both at the same time. It's either you use this one or you use this one. And this kind of cable, let me show you. This is the type of cable that we, you will use for this. Okay, you just put it in there like that. Most time, this will not be recommend for microphone use. Okay, this type of cable will not be recommend for microphone, but that does not mean that you can't use it. I do not advise you use this for microphone. This is supposed to be for instrument. Okay, this is, and don't confuse this. This is quarter inch, but this is balance quarter inch. This came with, uh, if you look at this, it comes with a two ring, two rubber ring. That means it's balanced. If it is one rubber ring, it's not balanced. And this actually is used for instrument. The non-balance is normally used for speaker or keyboard, all right? So you can use this for instrument, all right? So the input for instrument is going to be on the input. And if you're using microphone, you use the SLR. And the last one, which is the first one on top, is called insert. The insert is used to bring in external processor that is not on board. External processor like compression, if you have a compressor that you want to put, this is where you're going to put your compressor. Which means that the process will go through the compression and it will send it back in, okay, that's gonna be your insert. And I'm gonna make another video that we talk about different cables that we use in audio uh, feed, okay? So this will be for your external input, compression, if you have um, equalizer, if you have uh, tube compression gate and something like that, this is where you're going to put it, all right? Or if you have limiter or anything like that, this is where they go, the insert. And that's going to be the input for mic and the instrument. So let's say you are bringing in your, if you are bringing in your keyboard, your keyboard can go into the input on this one while your mic go on here. Now, there's another input that we have here, which is the input of this white and red. We have left, right, and so, we have input and we have output, okay? So, and I'm gonna use this last line to be my uh, demonstration, okay? Or, okay, let me use this as a demonstration. The first one, which is left and right, is going to be channel 17. And this one down here, which is left and right, is gonna be your channel 18. And this one is gonna be 19. This is gonna be 20. This is 21, 22, 23, 24. That's how it becomes 24 channel missing console. All right? So these are all inputs, okay? From here, 24 down, they are all input. And from here, go out like that, they are the output, and I'm going to show you in a minute. So these are also quarter inch input where you can put your, any musical uh, player that you want to play, that is external. This is where you want to bring it in, into the mixer. But you cannot use both of them at the same time. It's either you use this or you use this. Either one you choose, you have to make, you have a switch on the board that you have to switch to that you are using the top one or you are using the down one regardless. And this is the type of cable that you want to use for this input and output right there, okay? The red go to red, white go to white. That's the type of input cable that you want to use. And the other end, which is this, will go to your computer or your phone, okay? 
this go to the mixer this go to your computer or your music player all right that's all the input there now let's go to the output all right this section that you see that they cut out like this all right that's the output of the mixer okay that's the output the main output let me start from here here is a lamp you can buy a lamp that you plug here that will light up on the mixer so if you are working in an area that is not well lit this is where you want to put your lamp it's a four pin like SLR or pop pin you plug it here and it's a lamp okay you can search online and you get the lamp it's just gonna shine light on the mixer so that you know what you're doing the second input i mean output here this output is going to be your microphone talk back okay if you want to speak with people on the stage there's a way they set it up that you have your mic plug here when you talk to the mic and you have the switch on the board it's not going to come out of the main output it will only come out on the monitor or in here monitor of your talent or those that are on the stage all right that's what this mic talkback is meant for then under this we have your mono out okay if you are sending mono out this is where you're going to send the cable out to your speaker all right that's mono and you have fader for the mono which i'm going to show you on the board okay now the next one is going to be this which is going to be the master stereo output okay just like we have insert the master also have insert which is really good meaning that the insert is that you can put a compression on it or eq to tame down the output that's where you plug your insert this you can go out a quarter inch to your speaker if that's what you want if you're using um a uh, passive speaker a passive speaker that we need the amp to operate you want to come out of here into the amp and from the amp to the speaker but if you are using an active speaker that you have to plug the speaker directly to a power outlet then you come out from here go directly to that speaker or you come out of here to probably uh, a processing unit that will send signal to the speaker regardless but this is the main output right here so the next one here we have this output which is going to be a monitor output and this is the monitor you put on your table that you on yourself that you listen to okay is the monitor that you put on the table this is not the monitor you have on the stage okay but you send out monitor from here for your own listening as the operator the next one is matrix the matrix is more or less like the master output okay but it's more or less like you have another mix that you want to send to another area probably let's say that uh, you're doing live worship and you want to send another mix to your online service you can use matrix to do that and another way you can use matrix is that the output also you can use it in conjunction with your main output it can be another mix of the drum or of your vocalist going out from another speakers that is different from your from your main pa output okay let's say you have your front of the house speaker set up with the bass speaker everything and you have maybe four or six extra speakers that you want to loop together just to fill the house from another angle you can send your matrix to those speaker that is different from your main front of the out output okay you can use this for that or you can send the matrix output to another hall probably there's another room you can send main ma matrix outputs to that room or you can use it for online service like i said okay or you can send the output to another mixing board for further processing that's the matrix okay now the la last on this area is the group out the group out also you can use it for line service you can use it to send out to in here monitor or any other function that you want it to serve it's just an output that can differentiate the singers from the drummers or the instrument let me put it like that the instrument okay let's say you put 
you group your singers, the vocal, the vocalists, you group them to group one and two, your drum or an instrument to group three and four. You can mix them on your board and send them to the group and send the group out to your talent. If they want more drums, you can send them more drums, or if they want more vocal, you can send them more vocal. That's the group output, okay? And that's what they are used for. And the last on the board here, which is going to be all these six output, they are aux, they are called the aux output. The aux output is what you actually send on the wedges or stage monitor or whatever that you call it. It's a combination of all the mixes that you have on your board that you want to send on the stage. You can send one to the vocal, you can send to the organist, you can send to the drummer, you can send some to probably the lobby. You can send to different places. It's just an aux mix that you can send out to different places. And you can also use the aux mix to do your online service, depending on how you want to use it. So those are the functions of the output. All right, I think it is clear enough. We have the power on and off right here. And this is the power cable. And that's all about the mixer. And on top of here, which I'm going to show you, we have USB plug-in and we have iPod plug-in that you can play music. Okay, that's the back top. All right, that's it about the back rail. So let's go back on the board. So now I'm going to focus on one section of the board. If you look at this board, right, you understand that this place is empty. And we have some knob here, which is probably a yellow knob right there. From channel 9 to 16 of this board, actually have inbuilt compression, okay? The compressor is built in on this, but from channel 1 to 8, there's no compressor. So if for any reason you need compressor on any of this channel, you have to bring in external compressor. And that's where the insert comes in. The insert, that's where it comes in, okay? So on this board, I'm going to go through the fixtures right now, but let's focus on channel 15, channel 16, before we move on to other things that we have on the board, all right? So on channel 10, which I'm going to be using for my example, the first thing you're going to encounter is this two knob. If you are using, the first knob here is that if you are using like a condenser microphone that is really sensitive, okay? You can press that to take out 226 dB out of the input gain. That's number one. That is if you are using condenser microphone, okay? And the second knob is that if you're using condenser microphone, that will be like it. You have to engage the voltage vote and the light will come on. That will power the microphone if the microphone requires power, okay? That will power the microphone, except if your microphone is using battery. If your mic is not using battery, you need to press this 40 volt to power the mic. And that's number one. Number two is that the first knob, which is this gray knob, if you are coming in from a uh, line level, okay? Line level may be too powerful to, for the whole level, which is going to be that the unity gain on this knob, you have to engage the 26 dB to cut down on the input source, okay? If you are coming from line level, the input may be too hot for a mic level. So you have to depress, you have to press the 26 dB to cut down on the gain of the microphone, all right, or on the line level. That's about that. The next one is going to be the knob, okay? The, let, some people would call this one trim, but on this board, they call it green. It can be green, it can be trim, okay? Regardless of what they call it, regardless of what they call this thing, it's still mic gain. It's, this is the mic preamp, okay? This is where you have the preamp, all right? Then, the next knob is this small one. You press it. If for a voice or vocal, I will always recommend that you press this to cut out 100 arcs away, okay? From 100 arcs, it's gonna cut it down. And it's not cutting anything away, everything away. It's just a gradual slope. It's a gradual slope, like so. 
It's not like this. You are not cutting this way. If you are cutting this way, then you are cutting everything off. Right from 100 back to 10 dB. Uh, right from 100 back to 10 axe, you are cutting everything away if the slope is like this. But the slope is like this, which means you are not cutting sharply, you are cutting gradually. So anything from 10 dB to 100 dB, depend on the mixer, they may be cutting out 6 dB, they may be cutting out 12 dB, some mixer may be 24 dB. And I don't think any mixer will cut more than 24 dB out of the out of this slope. So, and if you are using vocal or microphone, if the channel is going to be for vocal, I would recommend that you take it out. All right. So it will eliminate some of the background, the room, the background noise that is not useful in your mixing. I will advise you to push that one to take it out. Okay. The next one is going to be the compression. And the compression is not going to be applicable to all mixer. If you are using analog mixer, I mean, if you are using digital mixer, I can guarantee that there's a possibility that 90% chance that the mixer or the channel will have compression, okay? But in this case, this is analog. The compression we have here is starting from 9 to 16. So this is a compression. This helps you to normalize the voice of your vocalist, okay? It's like an automatic volume that you turn it on and you turn it down. When it's too loud, you turn it down. When it's too low, you turn it up. That's the work of the compre that's the work or the function of the compression, okay? You have it on your mixer, that's good. If you don't have it, it's nothing too bad. You can get external compression if it's something that you need, all right? So that's compression. The next knob on this line. And before I go, before I forget, let me tell you, the line like this, all the way, like this cha channel now, channel nine, this line all the way down to the fader. That's what we call channel strip, okay? Channel strip, all right? And it's the same thing to every other channel. But this is channel strip number nine. Your signal is coming in all the way from here to here, to this, to this, to this, to this, to this, to this, all the way down here. That's channel strip, all right? So the next on this is going to be the, these three, I mean, this four knob, all right? The green four knob is what we're going to trick together, all right? In some analog missing console, it's going to be just three, all right? This one will not be included in some in some analog mixer. But in this case, we have four, okay? The first one is going to be high. So, this control the high pitch of your voice. When you want your voice to be bright and crisp, this is what we will be responsible for it. They call it high. And this is from eight kilohertz, okay? If I look at it, yeah. So this is control the eight Kilo as which is around like 8,000 as okay, that's what is controlling it. And you have this arrow which indicates the which you have this arrow that indicates the level that you are changing. And it's starting from minus 15 to plus 15. All right, so at the 12 o'clock is where we have the unity gain on this knob. Okay, 12 o'clock is the unity gain. The unity gain means that at that 8 kilo arc, you are not adding any, any effect and you are not taking any effect out of it if you leave it on 12 o'clock, which is the unity, okay? But let's assume, this is how you're going to use the eye, okay? Let's assume you have someone that is singing or talking on the mic and there's a lot of feedback not because the master volume is on, because that person has a lot of presence in his voice. If there's a lot of presence in your voice, then you go to this eye and you turn it down a little bit. You cut some out of it, okay? To reduce the presence in that person's voice, all right? And that can cause a lot of the, the is, 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 is. when you have that is, 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 in someone's voice, 
you want to cut out the eye. That's the function of this one, okay? But if the voice is too dull, you can put a little bit of life, crispiness, or, you know, life in that voice. The second one, okay, is your mid voice, which is like where your voice is more pronounced, like the body of your voice, okay? Let me call it like that, like you have your bottom, you have your mid section, and you have your head. I will compare the head to be the eye of this mixer, which is around the 8 kilo axe, where you have your voice to be more kind of crisp and more kind of life. The mid section of your voice is where you have the body, the life of your voice. This is probably where most of what is really important in your voice, this is where they kind of settle in, okay? Like this is the region you're going to find everything about human voice. It's in the mid section of our voice, the mid, okay? 250 to 5K, all right? That's the function of this. So from all the way down to all the way up, that's 250 to 5K, all right? Now, how you're going to use this is that, in conjunction with this. And this one that is next to it, work with this one, all right? This is the boost, which is going to be the cut or add, all right? For example, let's say you set someone up, they were singing, and when you listen to the voice of that person, there's some frequency that is coming that you don't really like. You use this mid to look for that frequency. If the frequency is between 250 to 5K, you're going to find it. Because the more you tweak it around, you look at that frequency, you listen to it, and if it's the frequency that is causing feedback or it's just too boomy or something you don't like, you turn this knob all the way to that frequency and you come here, you cut it out, okay? And that frequency will be out of it. But in another scenario, probably you see that, okay, the voice is not coming out the way you like. It's not that, you know, it's not that, the voice is not that punchy enough. Probably you look at the mix section of it that is not punchy enough. You can look at the sweet spot of the mid voice and look at the frequency that you like that is coming out that where you want more punch, okay? You set that frequency. Instead of cutting out that frequency, what you do is you boost it a little bit. And a little boost will go a long way. So this can either cut out bad frequency or boost good frequency, okay? And that's the function of these two. The last one on the green is your low, which is the bottom of your voice. And that's where you have the resonance base of your voice. If you give a mic to someone that has a deep voice, this last one, you may want to cut it down a little bit. After you may have taken out the 100 out of their voice, you may still want to use it to tame the busyness of that voice. You may use this to take it out. And if that person happened to be someone that has, you know, someone with a voice that is too thin, that the voice has no, you know, life in it, you can use this to give it a little bit of boost so that they can have a little bit of low mid in their voice. This section is called, it's what we call the EQ on this board. This is the onboard EQ, okay? Just to control and shape the tone of the voice. The next one on the channel strip is this four blue button, I mean knob, this four blue knob. And under the knob, we have these two buttons right here. These are buttons that you can press on and off. So this is the auxiliary, okay? If you remember at the back, we have six auxiliary output that you send out, we have six. We have six auxiliary output that we send out from the back. But here we have four. But down here we have extra two knob. This extra two knob, they are, the color is white. If you look at it, it's black and white. Why this one is black and blue? They are giving you two effects. But the effect also can serve as auxiliary if you want. 
So if you want more than four output aux, then you will have to sacrifice these two or one of these effect output, okay? It's a choice. So we have four permanent auxiliary and we have two flexible effect or aux output, okay? It's either you use it as a six aux or use it as a four aux and two uh, effects. So let's work with these four. This first one right here and this one, they are aux one, this aux two, aux three, four. This can cause aux five and six, okay? So, if you look at this button right here, we have pre, pre. It means that pre fader. If you press this, aux one and two will become pre, pre fader. If you press this, aux three and four will become pre fader. All right. The meaning is that if this one is pressed, the pre fader, the volume of this one will not be affected by the volume of the fader. Because if I depress this and leave it off, anytime I move this up and down, it's going to affect whatever I'm sending out to my house mix. For example, if you are sending the house to a stage monitor, I will advise that you put it to pre fader so that your fader level will not affect the level of the stage monitor, okay? Likewise, like the three and four, if you press this, it will not affect the output, okay? Now, after we have this four aux sent, we have two effects one and two, and the effect one and two also can be switched to, to aux five and six. This, this is the button that will be responsible for that. If I press this button, Okay, this two knob will switch from FS1, FS2 to AUX5, AUX6 if this button is pressed. Now I have six box output. Okay, but if I depress this and leave it off, these two button uh, knob will function as, as effect. The effect is that if I want to put some echo on voice, if I want to put reverb on voice, this is the two knob that will be responsible for this channel. All the channel, they have this, and this is going to be the level of the effect that I'm allowed, that I allow to come into this particular channel. The next button is going to be your pan. It's just self-explanatory. If you bring it here, it's going to move the channel to left. If you move it all the way, it's going to move it to right. If you center it, it's going to be coming out from left and right, okay? That's the function of that. On this particular mixer, if you look at it, you have this button which is on and off. If this button is off, if the light is not on, there's nothing, anything here will not be coming to this fader, okay? For the fader to engage, you have to press this button on, okay? If this button is not on, nothing is coming in the mixer that will be coming out of the stereo output. So on this channel 12 right now, you see we have fader, and on that fader, we have PFL, we have ST, we have three and four, we have one and two, and I'm gonna explain it, okay? This one and two, if you press the button one and two, it means that you are sending this channel to a group, okay? We have this, not this, this four fader. This four fader right here, this four, okay? This four fader, this is group one, group two, group three, group four, okay? This four group, the function with these two button, these two button. If you press this button, it sends this particular channel to group one and two here, this group. We send it to these two fader. If you press this, three and four, it send that channel to this two fader, which is four, I mean three and four, okay? Now, the next button is going to be this one, ST. If you press that ST, it send this channel to this red fader, okay? 
If you press the PFL, it will solo the channel to your headphone. It solo the channel to headphone, and whatever that is coming here is going to isolate all the channel, and only this one will be coming out of the headphone. Okay, that's the PFL. How do you use these two buttons? How I normally use the button is that every channel that is going to be instrument channel, like a microphone, I mean, like the drum, drum mic, the organist, the bass guitar, everything, I'll press all these one and two, and they'll be grouped to this channel one and two. And all my vocalists will be three and four, three and four. I press all the three and four, and they will be right here. So, one thing I want you to take note is that if you press the stereo on the channel fader, do not press it again on the group. All right? But the scenario you want to do that, like I said, is that if you press ST, the stereo on this channel, then you are sending this to a place that doesn't matter on this one okay then you can press the st because if you do not press this st and you do not press this st nothing will be coming out of your front of the house speaker okay but if you are going to send the group to front of the house speaker do not press this st use it from here press the st on this one and then we send it to this but if you have this press you have this one press you are sending signal to the ST, which is the stereo from the fader number one. So also, you are sending signal to this group channel, which is second signal. Now, the group channel is sending that same signal to the ST again, which means you are sending double mix to the same thing. If you do it this way, it's going to be modulated up and it's going to be, you, you, everything is going to be loud. And will be modulated up. So it's because you are sending the same signal twice. If you know you're going to be sending the group channel to the stereo, do not press this one. All right. I think this is explanatory. I mean, it's exp I mean, this is clear enough, right? You can only send the signal once. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't send it twice. Nothing is going to happen if you send it twice. The only thing is that everywhere is going to be loud. It's going to be loud. Because you are sending it from the channel strip and you are using and you are sending it out from the group again. It's going to be really loud. Okay? Now, let me tell you if you're going to sell your channel, some people will put their fader all the way down, press the FL, and they dial in this until they get a good signal. Some will bring their fader to Unity gain. Once they put it to Unity level, then they set the input trim or the gain until they see desire healthy level on their meter and they'll be good to go. Regardless of how you set it, there's no wrong way, there's no right way. Just be sure that you set your microphone right, the right way to get good out of that microphone. So if we have to move on, I really want to explain this aux and this effect okay that's what i want to explain now the blue button is the host channel looking at it right now the blue button is the host channel this is the effect channel okay so what happened here is that even though we have all this fader for the aux we have their masters here the effect we have their masters here okay and the matrix we have the master for the matrix here Okay, so let me explain, all right? If you have a microphone plug in here and it's coming, everything is set up. If you are sending out aux, this is where they stop. It's coming, first it go to the aux, and the aux go this way. Also, it goes down after feeding the aux, it's come to the effect, it feed the effect also, then it come down to the, the fader, all right? Let me explain one more time. Your, your signal is going to be coming in this way to the gain, to the compressor. It processes through the EQ. From the EQ, it will distribute the signal 
and feed all the oxes. The us we feed go this way. They are not coming down this way anymore. They go this way to their masters. Why the rest will come in? It's going to feed the effect. Effect also go to the master. Then it come down to the feeder. So let's assume you have ox feed. The ox will go this way. And we have this, you know, portions of this. This will be the final output for ox 1, ox 2, ox 3, 4, 5, 6. That will be the final output, okay, for the ox. They come this way all the way like this. To this output okay and the output which is the final you have the AP AFL button okay so that can give you that flexibility if you want the AP I mean AFL button to be on or off and that will be the final output for your effect the amount you send here okay will be like okay once you push all your knob on the effect like so let's say you dial the effect you dial it up this way if all this one is all the way down the effect is not going to be coming out but the amount of effect you dial here is what we send here the amount that you dial here is going to be what you send out to the speakers okay that will be the effect for the that will be going out this will be the input effect this will be the output so whatever you dial here is the amount of effect that you allow to come into the channel okay from this one backward all the blue from here back on the feather is the amount of effect that you allow to come into the board and this is the amount of effect that you allow to go outside the board okay that will be going to the speakers all right those are the effects all right i mean those are the the aux input now we we'll come to the effect, the effect, which is effect one and two, okay? If you look at this knob, whatever you dial here is going to be the amount of effect you allow, the, the, that you allow into the knob, and this one will be effect one and two, and we have FS one and two also, which can come from FS one to FS one two. You can switch the knob to left or right, or you can leave it at the center, which is going to be blend okay when you have it here it's going to be off 12 o'clock you turn all the effect off this is going to be blend this is going to be blend effect one to two effect one to two blend okay then you can have a delay on it if you want to have a delay on it you can tap this once you tap this and note that will be the delay if you release it it go back to normal okay then if you come to this section right here just this section this is where you have your group okay this one is going to be your group one okay group two group three group four which is this one this group all right and this is the final output if you look at this group one group two group three group four all right that will be their output on the group. Whatever you push here is the amount that you generate internally. Whatever you push here is what you are pushing out. All right, that's for the group. This knob is going to be your stereo or monitor, which is going to be the USB that you plug in. If you have the plug a USB, you can say that, okay, you want it to go to the stereo, which is going to be this red knob. If you have it up, it's going to go here. But if you have it down, it's going to go to the uh, monitor output, which is going to be your monitor only. That is, if you want to be the only one listening to the uh, what is playing through the USB, then it's not going to go to your PA. All right, that's the knob there. Then, this one is the iPod. If I plug my iPod now, this is going to be like if the amount I want to send in, okay? That will be the amount of my iPod. If I want to send the iPod just to my monitor or my table, I'll press this down. But if I want it to come out of this stereo, I have to leave it up, okay? That's for the 
iPod. And the next one is going to be my phone, which is the headphone, and this is the control for the headphone. And this is going to be your monitor, the one you have on your table. This will be the volume. And this is going to be your talk back. And the talk back, you have two buttons under the talk back. The talk back, I told you that you can plug a microphone here. When you talk on that mic, only the instrumentalist or your vocalist will hear it. It's not going to come out of the house PA. You have two buttons. You can either press this one and will be a stereo output. Okay, or you can press this one, it's going to come out of aux 1 to 4, which is going to be this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? If you press this one, when you use your talkback, it's going to come out of the monitor speaker on the stage, or the in-here mix it will come out of it. But if you press this one, it's going to be coming out of the main PA speaker, all right? That's everything about that. Like I said before, I told you that we have output and the, the main output, which is going to be this. And if you are using mono to run out your output, that's going to be this. That's going to be your mono. And this is the group. This is going to be the feather for the effect. And that's everything about the mixer. Here is where you have your digital part of the mixer. That is, if you plug, you can play from um, USB. You can record the whole section of the mix through this stereo output on USB. You can play it, you can rewind and forward. And you have inbuilt compressor on this. This is your effect, one and two. You have graphic EQ on this that you can use to tame out any bad frequency. You have compression, not this, compression but uh the compression that is built digital one the compression on this board on the on the screen here which is digital only work with the final output which is going to be the stereo okay it's not the compression that is going to be working on the individual channel the compression here is going to be for the stereo output here you can put compression on all the stereo output then this is the usb settings that you plug in and this is probably your main setup and you can go back home. This will be the knob you use to change the effect and that will be everything about the mixer today, all right? So, that's all about this mixer. This one is just to show you how you select your PFL or you select group or PFL, all right? So guys, that's everything about the Yamaha MGP24X that I have here. It's probably going to be the same concept with other mixer. There's no doubt about it. It's going to be the same. All analog mixer, they are more or less like the same. But one thing I like about this mixer is that if you look at the hop here, these two channel, right? There's something here that they call the dock. Docking is really effective. If you're going to be doing, let's say, for example, I want to use this board for podcast, or I want to use it in a radio studio settings that I'm going to be doing like live product. Uh, product. You see, this docker is really going to be what you will need in a radio settings. Okay. Now, we have these two lights. You can either choose channel, channel 16. This channel 16. You can choose this from the board here to be the one that will be a like a master master channel. That is, if you plug your microphone to channel 16 and you have your dock horn, if you are playing music, let's say you are doing a live show and you are playing music, and lock the music, you're going to be talking on it. And you don't want the music to compete with your voice. That's where the docking comes in. So anytime you play music in some radio station, what they do is that they will have their hand on the fader that the music is being played. Let's say they have the music on this channel like so. When the music is playing, it will be in unity gain, all right? But their own voice, they will have it also up like this. Let's say this is their own channel for their voice. And this is the one for the music. Their voice will be up like this. 
and they will have their microphone on. They will be speaking to their microphone. But anytime they want to talk to their microphone, their finger is on the channel that is playing the music. They bring the fader down. They stop talking. They bring it up, up, down, up, down, up, down, so that the music will not compete with their voice. But in this case, you don't have to do up, down, up, down with your finger. The board can actually help you to do that internally to bring down the music when you are talking and bring up the music when you stop talking. And this is how it happens. You can use, according to this light, if this dark source is showing that channel system is lighting up, it means that I have to plug my microphone, which is going to be the host microphone, I plug it to channel 16. Okay? I put my iPod or iPad, I play music. When I'm playing music, the source for the music can either be 21 and 22, 23 or 24. That's where you plug your music. When they are playing, you push it up, your music is playing, and your channel 16 also, you put the volume up. Anytime you are talking, depend on the settings because you can go on the board and do the settings. Probably I'm going to make another video about the docking alone, okay? The docking, I have another video for that, that we go in depth. I can't go in depth now because already this video is getting too long for my liking. The docking is that when you are talking, anytime signal is coming through your microphone, the board automatically bring this feather down internally. And when you stop talking, it raise it back up internally, okay? That's the function of the docking. It will not allow the music to compete with your voice, depend on the settings here. And now we have another video for that. So guys, it's already too long for my liking. So that's gonna be the end of this video. I hope you gain one or two knowledge from this little, you know, talk and talk. And if this video is of any value to you, please, if you are yet to be a subscriber on this channel, I will say that you subscribe, support this channel to grow, please. If you're already a subscriber, I welcome you back again. Thank you for being part of this uh, channel. And that's going to be my time on this one, guys. So until next time, stay blessed, remain blessed. Bye-bye.